I've noticed recently that the collar around the stovepipe where it protrudes through the roof is getting very rusty and it's delaminating. As you all know rust expands metal and it delaminates it and around the edges here it's getting very bad indeed. So I feel I need to do something about it. I've done quite a lot of research trying to look at other people's vlogs and so forth, boat tubers, that sort of thing. What I haven't found is anyone that has actually replaced one of these. David from Cruise in the Cut took his collar off and replaced it, having resealed around it. I've seen other boat tubers who have fitted in new stoves to their boats and they've explained about fitting the collar but I've not seen anyone actually take off an existing collar and replace it. Hi, and thanks for joining me. We're now in September, and I sort of feel it's too late to do it this year. I've done research as to what colours are available, and they're all different sizes. This one is 12 inches by 8 inches, that's 30 centimetres by 20 centimetres. I'd obviously like to find one that is a direct replacement. The sizes vary enormously. This is protruding through the roof on the sloping part. Some of these collars are designed with a curve in them to fit on the curving roof. I have found a collar which is the same size as this, but they call it a straight collar. Now you wouldn't think a straight collar would fit on the curve of the roof. But I'm struggling to know whether my collar is a straight one or a curved one. When you look at the chimney from the distance, you can see that it's actually on a slope. <laughs> it's not coming up straight. It's sort of leaning over to one side. And it does make it difficult for me to know exactly what it is that I need to replace. Having now seen the collar with the chimney removed, I realise that the collar is curved and the actual flue pipe part is straight up. I think I was a bit misled when the chimney was on it because it does lean because one part is slightly higher than the other and I think that gives the leaning effect. So I do need to find a curved collar of the right dimensions to go there. So I think we could ignore what I said previously. <laughs> Sorry about that. So my intention for this year, given the fact that we're now in September, is to grind it down around the edges and seal it. This is a job I think that needs to be looked at earlier in the year when we're not using the heating. <laughs> because once this collar comes off, if you can't find the right replacement then you've got a problem. The other issue is that with most collars you can clearly see that there are holes at this position either side where the bolts go through. I can't tell with this collar where the bolts pass through. So I think for this year I'll just do it up. It's not leaking inside the boat I've had, a, I've had a good look, obviously once it starts raining again <laughs> properly I'll know better but I think for now I'll just try and make an improvement on what I've got. So I'm going to grind it down, tidy it up as best I can and then I'm going to seal it. And I've purchased some Sikaflex. This seems to be what other boaters use. 
It is a marine adhesive sealant, actually made in Switzerland. There are all sorts of sealants available, various marine ones. It's difficult to know what to buy, but this seems to be one of the main ones that boaters use. It is difficult to know whether I'm doing the right thing but I would like to tackle the job myself if I can. But for this year, I'll do the repair. Next year, there'll be plenty of time to take this off, look at it more thoroughly, and then scout around to make sure I get the right replacement. What one has to bear in mind is that there are various different collars manufactured. They're different sizes. They have a different height inside. The diameters are different. The actual flue pipe comes up and should be level with the top of the collar. Let me actually show you that. Let's put that down. So this is the collar and the flue pipe should be exactly the same height within the collar. So you can see the difficulties. If you buy the wrong collar, it might be too low, too high, or whatever. Anyway, let's see how I get on. Right, here goes. <laughs> It's actually quite difficult getting in here because of the handrail. Taking the handle off the grinder <laughs> made it a lot easier to get here in between the handrail and the collar. <laughs> I didn't think of that straight away. It's cleaning up quite nicely. What I need to be careful of is I don't want to damage the edging round here. Because if I undo that, I'm going to have to redo it all. So I've got to be very careful with how I approach it. I know this isn't the right mask to be wearing, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> it's cleaning up quite well. I'm not a perfectionist. I just need to make sure I've got a sound base on which to put the sealant. But I need to make this seal along here better, where these join. I have done this before and it has worked. So that's what I'm going to do once I've tidied up. And then before I paint it, I will treat the, the metal because we've got back to bare steel. So I will treat that before I um, you know, prime it and paint over it. But I don't see any reason why not to carry on with the actual sealant itself. What I haven't mentioned is that I haven't found the holes for the bolts. <laughs> All of these collars I've looked at have got holes either side for the bolts to go through the roof and to be tightened up from underneath. But there are no bolts with this one. That could make it even more difficult to locate exactly what I need. 
I'm pleased with how things are going so I'm going to crack on I'm just going to tidy up the roof and then I'm going to do some sealant I'm not going to make a big job of this just want to get on and get it done I know there will be viewers saying I'm not going about this in the right way and I should do a better job and do it in a different way and that sort of thing but I have done it before and it did work this is a little bit more thorough than what I did previously as long as I can get a good seal between the collar and the boat that would be fine I'm not disturbing the existing seal and I do know that makes it a little bit more difficult to make that small gap <laughs> watertight. As I say, I've done it before and I intend to do it again. The other thing of course that I need to think about and I will be doing shortly is cleaning the flue. The flue, I clean it once a year, some people do it twice a year, I tend to do it once a year in September ready for the season of coldness winter and so forth and the nights are drawing in already actually it's much much cooler and it's just early September but all these jobs will get done this canister or tube or whatever you wish to call it is actually of metal construction very often they're plastic and at the top you just cut off the plastic sealer with a knife and you get access but this one is slightly different there's no instructions on how to open it I'm imagining that you prod something in there like a screwdriver and it breaks the seal and then the sealant will come out it certainly doesn't look as though you pierce it in any other way so that's what I'm going to do <laughs> I'll catch up with you in a minute. Some of you will have noticed I've changed my shirt. I put an old one on now. <laughs> there are all sorts of health warnings on here about not touching your skin and one thing and another, as is quite common with any product like this. But quite how bad this is, if it touches you, I don't know. <laughs> There's no guidance on the tube about how quickly it cures or anything like that. So I'm just going to crack on with this and see how I get on. I'm at the wrong angle here. <laughs> Oops. Oops, not doing that very well. Yes, I'm trying to avoid the camera actually. <laughs> got some old ice cream sticks that I'm going to use. I'm going to smear it around as best I can. This needs to be functional rather than pretty. I'm not sure how well this will, will rub down. Maybe I should have found a specification sheet it would tell me more about it. <laughs> That's very messy, very messy indeed. It's certainly sealing the gap around the collar. Well, I'm really pleased with that. It's gone very well. And the good thing, of course, is I'm only answerable to myself. So if it isn't right, I can only blame me. I think what I will do is see if I can find a specification sheet to tell me more about the product. I know I should have done that to start with, but uh, 
things don't always go in the right order, do they? I do understand that you can paint over it, so that shouldn't be a problem, but I'll just do some checking. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave it to dry and I'll revisit it at the appropriate time. Whether that will be today or another day, I don't know. But I will do some treatment to the, um, the steel. We've got bare steel there now. I'll treat it with, uh, I think it's Vactan that I use now. I'll treat it with the Vactan and then I'll prime it and it will get painted blue eventually. I'm very pleased with the way this has dried or is drying. It's quite firm now. Looks like quite a good finish. I know it doesn't it doesn't look a good finish, but I think it's a good finish from the point of view of being weatherproof. I can always go over it again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to treat the metal with Vactan. This is Vactan. I bought this some while ago, so I hope it's still okay. I've given it a good shake. The only requirements is that it shouldn't be less than five degrees. So the temperature is okay. It is the end of the day, but uh, I think this dries pretty quickly. And it says apply by spray or brush. 40 micron thickness coat is optimum. Well, I don't know how to work out the micron coat, so uh, I'm just going to crack on and do it. <laughs> Well I've finished the Vactan treatment as you can see. You can see on the side here how the roof gets stained from when the stove is burning. Well that's it for today. The job is done. I don't think I mentioned that Vactan is self priming. So I do believe I can paint straight over this without having to do a separate primer. and. I'll probably cheat and do that I think. This is a solid piece, it isn't going to completely rust and rot away. <laughs> so it doesn't need the, quite the same protection as other parts of the boat. The important thing is it matches the boat and the same colour blue. So I'll probably do that tomorrow, weather permitting. Well, it's been raining this morning. I had hoped to do some further work on the chimney collar. It's wet. It's going to be dull all day today. So I can't imagine me doing anything. I may actually move on. I've been here for a couple of days now. I don't normally stop anywhere too long. And it would be good to give the engine a run. So I'm not really sure <laughs> what the plan is, but uh, if it does dry up, I will paint it, but I think it's very damp. Let's just have another look, shall we? <laughs> you can see here it's very wet. I just don't think it's the right conditions for painting today. <laughs> I think only one boat has passed me. It's mid-morning now, so um, there's not a lot of movement on the canal here anyway. <laughs> Good morning everyone. It's two days since I did the job around the chimney collar. It rained yesterday, so nothing was done. But I did move the boat, so I'm in a new location. 
I have also researched the data sheet on the sealant and from this it tells me that the skin time is 60 minutes it actually says Cycloflex 291i is a multi-purpose product used in marine constructions it is suitable for making elastic vibration resistant joint seals and can also be used for a variety of interior sealing applications so that's what I've used it's nice and dry I'm gonna crack on and paint it I'm quite pleased with the finish it's outside I'm not going to be staring at it all the time the important thing is that it's sealed I'm just gonna paint it now and the job will be done next thing of course will be to clean the flue but that's a different uh, that's a different day a different task when I paint I usually decant some of it into a little pot so as not to contaminate the tin of paint but this tin is quite old and it's nearly empty so I'm going to dip my brush straight into the tin so here goes Paint's going on very well. Very pleased with that. That's it for this episode. I'm pleased with what I've done. It may not be a perfect finish, but it doesn't need to be. It needs to be functional. So many, many thanks for watching. It's the first time I've done some DIY for a long while, and I know people do ask about it. So I hope you enjoyed what you've seen, <laughs> being attacked here. <laughs> oh, go away. <laughs> Dear. Sorry about this. <laughs> so where was I? Many thanks for watching. If you haven't yet done so, please do think about subscribing, clicking the little bell to receive notifications of future videos. Until next time, look after yourselves, your friends and families. Take the utmost care. Bye for now.